incense they were talking about. That incense is that sweet savor, that prayer. That prayer that God desires. He loves to hear it. He loves to, to sense it. If you'll just praise Him this morning, church, and just pray. That's what He wants. He is worthy of our praise this morning. Cast your cares upon the altar this morning. Kids going down this morning? No, we're good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm trying not to disturb what God wants to do this morning. I know we're supposed to bring our tithes and offering, but we can do that in a minute. Bible talks about waiting on the Lord. <clears throat> You're worthy of the all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. And for you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Amen. There was a praise earlier, but it's, it, I don't know, it's just, it's quiet right now, so I feel like maybe God wants a little word shared. And honestly, <laughs> y'all are just going to have to go with me, because I had no idea I was preaching this morning. I think God knew about 1.30, and I'll just, let me ease into it that way. Let me follow my train of thought. I've got scripture, and I've got word. But about one thirty, two o'clock maybe, I just woke up, got up, went right back to bed, and I laid there and I laid there. Y'all ever had those times where you just, you can't go to sleep. You can't go to sleep. So I got on my phone and I'm playing with my phone. I'm like, I'll just, I'll scroll till I fall asleep. So I'll be honest with you, I was scrolling. And then... Things after things after things started coming. Algorithms started hitting and things started hitting. And I started thinking and 
started asking questions and I knew this song was coming and God just started showing me things. And I went to bed excited. I had some word I was going to share just a few little verses with you for that song this morning. And man, I, I was like, I was going to come to church this morning and I was going to come to Martha and say, Martha, you're just going to have to give me a little room on these songs because I'm ready. But then Joey called me at quarter to seven and we went back and forth and, you know, talking and I was surprised he called and I was like, God's working this out. God has a word for us this morning and I don't know why he chose me to give it to you, but he did. And he's worthy this morning. And I thought about it. If I don't share all this that I've got scattered down here, Wednesday night's coming. Because everything that we've talked about this morning, everything that's gone on for the past few hours has just lined up. God is ready to move in this country. God is ready to move in this world. And I believe it's time we give God his due. We give God his praise. And we got to get ourselves right. Something is about to take place. I don't know what I feel God when I say that. I, it's coming and going now, but something is about to happen. I don't know what. I can't tell you what it is. But I didn't plan on saying that, but I feel it. And I'm just going to start down with the, the way this thing come out. We're going to be in Revelation, and I never, hardly ever preach out of Revelation because it's a crazy book to read. And if you really understand what the Lord is showing you, it's a great book. It's an awesome book, and it's not that hard if you'll just study it. But last week I stood in this pulpit, and I was asked to give my vision for the next year. And the first, or one of the verses I pulled out was Philippians 2.12. And we always use that part, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But don't ever leave out as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. We've got to work out our own salvation, which doesn't mean figure out how we want to do things and then work it out with God. No, work it out with God what his will is for us in our life. And his will is that we all make it. He said, I would that none should perish, but all that should have everlasting life. Amen? And I'm working things out. I'm working things out. And then this, I didn't write this down, but I can't get away from saying it. There's a verse that says, What profiteth a man that he should gain the world? but lose his soul. And you can think of that verse in a lot of ways, but this week it's made a difference because what profiteth a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his own soul? If you're stuck in a place that you feel like you need to be in order to make it in this world, but yet, that place that you're in is not doing you any good spiritually. Get out of it. Amen? I know y'all are staring at me, but these are things that God put on my heart. And I've had to make those decisions this week. And I haven't told a lot of people, and I'm not probably going to bring up a whole lot today, but I've had to make the decision that is it worth me staying right where I'm at doing what I'm doing when it's tearing me apart on the inside? And why can't I make a decision to make a change? And that change that's coming, that it's going to happen. It's already happened. I can't expect the same things I would as up in this situation, but God keeps telling me, do you not have enough faith in me that I can take care of you over here? The same way I took care of you over there. Even though you know over there is better in some ways. But I can take care of you here just as good. What profit us to sit in the same space we're in. 
and keep going through these same things every day, day in and day out, and to be miserable just because we're trying to make it here. Making it here is not what's important. Making it there. Amen? And then when I was getting ready to go this morning early, that we are overcomers. Revelation 12. This is another one. Was Revelation chapter 12. It's, we're going to read verse 10, 11, and 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. I heard that loud voice. Amen. If I have to be that one crying out in the wilderness this morning, you're hearing a loud voice from heaven this morning. Amen? I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before God night and day. The accuser of our brethren is cast down. Satan has been cast down. You feel like he's accused you, he's told you you're no good, he's told you you're not going to make it, you can't make it, but that is wrong. Amen? Night and day he did that. We just sang that song, night and day. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. This is where it's really going to start getting interesting. I put the icing on cake now. Let's cut it and eat it. <laughs> and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death. We've heard this, and I've heard this the same way you've heard it all my life. But it means something more. There's a deeper meaning to this. When it says they love not their lives unto death means what profit is a man to lose his soul? To gain the world and lose his soul? Therefore rejoice, ye heavens... And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the seal, and of the sea, excuse me, that possibly looks like an L. Inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. Your accuser is night and day going before the throne of God. It even says in the Bible, he is, he's been before the throne. Remember uh, Job? God was having a meeting, talking with some folks up there, and the devil just happened to be around. And he said, devil, what you doing up here? I'm just roaming to and fro. I'm looking to somebody I can devour. <laughs> Have you tried my servant, Job? Y'all are quiet, and I hope y'all are understanding what I'm saying. Have you tried my servant, Kenny, yet? Yes, you have. Amen? I can say, yes, he has. But you know what? I'm an overcomer. Because it says, I overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, which we know who that is, Jesus Christ, and by the word of their testimony. Y'all want to dig into that just a little bit deeper? John then heard a hymn of praise uttered by a loud voice from heaven. Announcement was made of the coming demonstration of divine salvation and power with the advent of the millennial kingdom. Satan was characterized as the one who accuses believers before our God day and night. The principle by which he was overcome and cast out of heaven was the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Not only did Christ provide the victory, but also those who were martyred took part in that victory. Those in heavens were called on to rejoice 
because of Satan's defeat, but the earth was warned that the devil was filled with fury because he knew that the time is short. Our testimony is what God has already done for us. Amen? The Word, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word of our testimony is what the Word has already done for us, which has made a way that we don't have to worry about losing our soul. We've already won it. Amen? Amen. He deserves the glory. He is worthy of it all. Amen? I told y'all, please just bear with me. The devil knew that his time was limited. By no stretch of the imagination can these prophecies be spread to cover. I don't need to read all that. (laughs) This is where it's going to get interesting. Exodus chapter 25. I told y'all it's scattered, so y'all just stay with me. The word of our testimony. The testimony is our altar. Amen? The altar was built by design specific the way God wanted it built and it's described here in Exodus chapter 25 and they shall make an ark a shittim a shittim wood two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half breadth thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof he had specific way he wanted it done a specific way he wanted it built And in verse 16 it says, And thou shalt put into the ark of the testimony which I give thee. The ark of the testimony, the ark, the altar. The altar is the testimony. Amen? So when we are made overcomers, we're made by the testimony of our experience at the altar of what God has done. Amen? In verse 21 it says, And thou shalt put the mercy seat above, the, above upon the ark, and the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you the victory, something you can testify about. Y'all know what was in the ark? It was all the examples of the things that gave the children of Israel victory, the manna. That's one I can remember. There's a couple other things. The Ten Commandments. The Rod of Aaron. The Manna. These are the victories to prove that he is our testimony of victory. That's why we testify, church. That's why I'm trying to testify this morning about what God has done for me this morning. When he gives you a victory, you've got to testify that. You've got to share that. That's how you become an overcomer. By the word of God, by what the word of God has done for you, what you've accomplished in your life through God, what he's brought you through. But he always says, I'll meet you at that altar. And there I will meet thee. I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. From between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony, and of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. The atonement cover symbolized for Israel what was the later accomplished by Christ, who as the Lamb of God made atonement for our sins by the shedding of his blood. So we know that we are overcomers by the testimony, by what God has already done for us, what Jesus has already done for us. So day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Night and day, day and night, let incense arise. I heard that and I was like, why do they keep saying that over and over and over and over again? Why is they keep talking about incense and burning over and over and over and over again? Y'all know what the incense is? Exodus chapter 30. And thou shalt make an altar, a shittim wood, Shalt thou make it? 
And he described how to make another altar just to burn the incense on. And in verse 6 it says, And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat. Mercy came a running like a prisoner set free. Amen. Past all my failures to the point of my need. But the sin that I carried. Was all I could see when I could not reach mercy. Mercy came a-running to me. That's my testimony. The mercy seat. That mercy, that altar. That where God laid upon. He said, where I will meet thee. Verse 35 says, and thou shalt make it a perfume. He even went through talking about all the stuff you need to put in to make that incense. That incense is one special incense. And I'm, I'm trying not to go through and read this whole thing. But y'all remember the, the Christmas story? Frankincense, myrrh, and gold. These were all things that were put into the temple. That's what this incense was made out of. Myrrh, frankincense, specific amounts and specific things, a lot of things. God wants it a specific way. And it said, too, that it smells pretty good. What do you women like to do? Y'all like to put on stuff that smells pretty good, right? But the, he said in this, thou shalt not put it to the flesh. This is mine. This is what you set aside for me. You make this incense the way I want you to make it. And you do it to glorify me because this incense is your prayers. And your needs coming up to me. And thou shalt beat some of it very small and put it before the testimony of the t congregations where I will meet thee. And it shall be unto you most holy. Your prayer is one special specific thing that's only for God. And he enjoys that. That's a sweet smell to him. He loves to hear. He loves to, to see your testimony, your prayers. When you come before that altar, he said, build and set it before me. And then pray to me. That's what he wants. Amen? Amen? He wants to hear that. That sweet savor. Lord Jesus, y'all. Revelation 4 and 8. This is talking about the throne of heaven. Y'all know what the throne of heaven looks like? Let's just read it. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened into heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat upon the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. I probably didn't say that right. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of, burning, of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto the crystal. In the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was, a, was like a lion and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face of a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. There's a lot of stuff going on right there, ain't there? But can you imagine what the sight of that throne has to be? Rainbows, shining gold, and all these precious emeralds, and a glassy sea right there. Just It's got to be beautiful. And there's a God that sits on that throne. And the four beasts, and each of them, six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within and the rest. And they rest day and night. There's that night and day again. That night and day kept coming around. And they rest not 
day and night saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and which is and is to come. They sing praises day in and day out all day long. That's all they do is just sing praises. That is a sweet savor. That is an incense. That is great to God. He wants to hear that. My Bible says for us to pray continually, pray without ceasing, to always be praying, to always be in communication, to always be talking to God. That is a sweet savor incense to him. That is a testimony unto him as to what he's done for us. If you can't pray for anything, just pray, thank you, God. Thank you, God, I took my next step. Thank you, God, that I made it this far. Amen? Amen. It's not been easy to get where you're at. But guess what? You're here. And he said what was and what is and what is to come. So that tells me that however I got here, if I keep going... I'm going to make it here. And if I can make it here, I need to praise God because, oh, wait a minute, I'm making it all the way over here. Amen? And then you look back and go, boy, I came a long way. Amen? He is worthy to be praised this morning, church. Amen? And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat upon the throne who liveth forever and ever... The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne, and they worshiped him and that liveth forever and ever. And like the song said this morning about bowing down and worshiping in front of him, they cast their crowns before the throne. Whatever crown they had, y'all know that we're supposed to receive a crown of life, a crown that you know we say we deserve because we worked for it. Amen. Y'all got silent on that one. But the Bible says we're going to receive a crown one day. Amen? I'm worried. I'd love to see my crown. But you know what? No matter what accomplishments that I've made in this life, if there are any, whatever crown I receive, one day, like the elders, I am more than happy to take it off and to bow down and lay it at his feet because he is the one that is worthy to let me have that. Amen. Sometimes I don't, I know I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but I don't feel like I've accomplished much of nothing. Oh, me. Sometimes I don't feel worthy to stand up here. I didn't plan to say none of this. But I imagine, I know there's some good things I've done. I've led some people to the Lord. I've preached a funeral one time to a really good friend that he, he'll tell anybody it was because of me that he got into church, but I didn't take him where he went. I just got him here. He's the one that went the rest of the way. That's on him. Amen? But even if that jewel's in my crown, if it is, I'm more than happy to say, here you go, God. Thank you. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of anything I've ever accomplished. Matter of fact, thank you for getting me through all the dumb things I did. <laughs> amen? amen? Now, I got some amens for that. We've all done dumb things, right? He still deserves the glory for that. Why does he receive glory? Because he made you get through it. <laughs> I've made dumb financial decisions. Stupid financial decisions. <laughs> Jennifer, you can say amen. Go ahead. <laughs> but guess what? I haven't missed a meal. I still have a place to live. I still got a car to drive. I still got a job to go to. I still got a good church to come to. Amen? Y'all can clap. Go ahead. We've got a good church. Amen. There's a faithful body of Christ right here. If nothing else, thank you, God, for placing me in a place that we can be happy and that we can worship together. Amen. That's the incense to the Lord. Thou art worthy, verse 11, O Lord, to receive the glory and the honor and the power. For thou hast created all things. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. 
You deserve the glory. And for thy pleasure, they are, were created. Chapter 5 says in Revelation, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Remember that image I just showed you about the throne of God and this great, beautiful God sitting on the throne? He himself that was worthy to be praised. He himself that's the creator of our universe. He who is worthy to be praised that we're going to bow down to and we're going to give our crowns to and we're going to give it all up. Whatever, whatever reward we got, it's all yours, God. I don't deserve none of it. You do. I'm sorry. I'll move back over here. <laughs> I'm working that camera. But even him, my father in heaven, as great as thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, so great my soul sings out, my Savior, my God to thee, how great thou art. He's holding a book. The Bible says book, some say scroll. And it's a scroll that's written on both sides. And you know how unique that is? It, I was reading about this last night. Not all scrolls are written on both sides of the paper. This was a special scroll, a one of a kind, something so dear. And it held things that was so precious. And it held something that only somebody worthy could open. Amen? Verse 2 says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? God himself on the throne was not even worthy to open this book. Wow. Y'all get that? Y'all staring at me like, I love this expression, a cow looking at a new gate. <laughs> so, I'm just trying to make y'all laugh, y'all. God himself needed to find somebody worthy to open this book. And no man in heaven nor earth or under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Couldn't even look in it. Amen. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. It was breaking John's heart. It's like, Lord, how are we going to make it? How are we going to get there? If God himself can't even do this. And he wept. It says he wept a lot. He said in verse 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Weep not this morning, church. I have went around Stone Mountain and back to here to get you here. Weep not this morning, church. Fear not. Weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. There is somebody worthy. Amen? There is somebody that God said, I'm going to send down there to earth and I'm going to let him do a job because it needs to be done. Amen? Remember I told you we was overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony? That's our testimony right there. That Jesus became that lamb. He was the lion. Remember what he says? Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. He was a lion. But then he became the lamb. 
Amen? That sacrifice, that ultimate sacrifice for us. John saw that mighty angel, and he heard him ask in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and to open the scroll? This is the first of 20 times loud voice occurs in Revelation. There was a lot of loud voices talking that day. Amen? John was seeing a lot. And this is where i got to decide how far I want to jump ahead and come back. The Greek word rendered scroll is from the word is derived Bible. When no one was found worthy, John wept and he wept. He kept trying. And one of the 24 elders told him to weep not. And he introduced him to the lion, the tribe of Judah, the root of David. And the elder informed John that he had triumphed. That is, he had already achieved victory. That he alone was able to break the seals and open the scroll. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. What God has already done for us is our testimony. Amen. That is why we, and he said that, you know, he was at the root of David. I'm just going to go on over here, y'all. Revelation chapter 22. And then I'll come back to that. And this is where there's a lot going on. I might have to do a Wednesday night study on some of this. Let me just read this whole chapter. And he showed me a pure river of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of that throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of it, and in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruits, and yield their fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree thereof were for the healing of nations. We have a choice to make. Golly, y'all. I need to save that for Wednesday night. There were two trees in that garden that made a difference. One, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and I'm going to get into this one Wednesday night because it's too good to not to just deep into it. And then there was one of the tree of life. Knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. I was told not to eat of the knowledge of good and evil, but they did. They made a choice. And then God said, now that they've ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and ill, they become like us. They know now. And the, we became cursed. And that's when the curse came, the first sin, the original sin. But he cast them out of the Garden of Eden because there was another tree there. And it was the tree of life. And he knew that because of our sin, we had to die in our sin to become free again. That was the way out. And he knew that if we was to eat of that tree of life at that time, that we would have to die in our sin. But he protected that, and he made another way out, that it was Jesus Christ that made the way for us to be redeem our sin. I might have to go into a Wednesday night on about that because it's not making sense this morning. But we have a choice to make this morning. Those choices have consequences. My choice is to praise the God and to give him the praise he deserves. Revelation 22, 6 says, And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show us his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Go ahead.
He's right. <laughs> this verse is on my mind, but I didn't write it down, and I didn't know where to put it in. It says, judge not, lest you yourself be judged. How can somebody judge somebody that's never experienced what you've experienced? Jesus Christ walked this earth as a man. He experienced sorrow. He experienced hurt. He experienced blessings. He experienced everything a human being can experience. He had compassion. He had sorrow. Look at all the times that people had lost loved ones and they were passing by and he saw the anguish in them and he said, I'm going to take care of that. And he touched them and brought them back to life. That's compassion he had on somebody. He sees your need. He sees where you're at. He knows what you need this morning. Amen? He's worthy of praise because he experienced that for you. For you. When it talks about the veil, the mercy seat before the veil, Jesus was looking through that veil, and he said, I see it, Father. I see where I need to go. I see where I need to do. And he was willing to come down here and to do what he did. Amen? Go back to chapter 5, and I'm going to finish with this because... And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts, and in the midst of the other stood a lamb, as it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which were, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth to all the earth. And he came, and he took the book out of the right of the hand of him that sat on the throne. Jesus walked up to God his Father and said, All right, Daddy, let me have that. God gave it to him, and he took it. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and the twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, full of odors, full of incense, these vials, these altars of praise that was coming up, which are the prayers of the saints. Your prayers are loved by God. Amen? The only one that is worthy to take you from where you're at. Remember the Bible talks about being in the miry clay in the pits. But as far down as you can go and then down a little bit more. He reaches down and he grabs you. And he pulls you up. And he sets you right back on that solid ground. Amen? Amen. You are worthy this morning. You are not defeated. Amen? Amen. I've done a poor job getting to right here. But y'all, sometimes I overshare, and I'm going to do it again. Because this is my testimony. This is where I'm going to give God praise for me for a minute. <clears throat> I do not care for the month of December. <laughs> I'm just going to be straight with you. I am not happy through those months. And these past few weeks, y'all probably even noticed it. But the only thing that gets me through is I know who I'm serving. Amen? Amen. That one day, I don't have to worry about all that junk no more. Amen? No matter where I'm at, and when I started feeling like I just wasn't worthy about doing none of this stuff no more, he still said, uh-uh, you are worthy. He showed me at 2 o'clock this morning, you are worthy. Amen? <laughs> Y'all, I apologize. It feels like I've just been up here stammering for an hour, but I didn't know I was preaching. I was hoping to have time to organize my thoughts and sit around. But you are worthy this morning, church. It, and one thing I think of, Joe, is to keep playing that song. Worthy. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood and out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. He is the healer of our nations. Amen? 
He is the way out. When things don't look that great, He is the way out. He is the way we become overcomers. Amen? We are overcomers. And He has made unto us our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Amen? That right there told me we're going to reign. Y'all don't seem too excited about that. <laughs> You're going to be an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You rule and you reign over your life. That's a hard statement to say. But you do. You have that choice. And it's because of him. It's not because I'm great. But I can make that decision today that I'm not going to walk in that mess. Amen? I'm going to walk worthy. He is worthy of my praise. He is worthy of it all. Amen? Without him, I'm nothing. And I say that meaning it. Without him, I am nothing. Amen? But if I preached this about an hour ago, it was like, probably shouldn't have even sang this morning. I probably just wouldn't come on up here and shared what was on my heart. Saying with a loud voice in verse 12, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such are in that sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb of God forever and ever. He is worthy this morning, church. And he's coming back. I do want to read this. Behold, I come quickly. That's Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, if you want to look it up later and read it. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. That's why it's so important to study that book. You've got to understand, behold, he comes quickly. And when he comes, you've got to be ready. You've got to understand he's worthy. He's worthy of that praise. He's worthy. He's the one that paid the price for us to make it. Amen? He done the work. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard them and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel and showed me these things. And he saith unto me, See thou not, do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of the brethren of the prophets and, which, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. That just told me that John went down to bow down before an angel. Those angels that are protecting us, that we look to for strength and comfort. What did he say? No, don't worship me. I'm just equal with you. John, know y'all are equal with an angel this morning? The only thing that separates us is knowledge. They're just already there. We're seeking to get there. But we are worthy. He made us worthy. I keep saying that, but y'all got to understand, he's the one that made us worthy. I'm deciding how far I want to go. And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him still be holy. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to, as his work shall be. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. 
I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and the morning star. He has sent us to testify of the things he's done for us. Amen. Unto these things in the churches. We've got to testify. Amen. We've got to be that light. He said, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book or this prophecy, God shall take away his part in the book of life. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of, your, of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I just read you the end of the book. You've heard the end of the book. You've heard the altar call. Y'all, I have stumbled this morning, and I feel like I've done nothing but ramble. But hear me when I say this to you today. Worthy of it all. Behold, he comes quickly. He's made a way for us to make it. And if for whatever reason this morning, you don't feel like you're in the right place, this is the place. I've just read to you the end of the book. If any, I'm not going to read it again. He's calling unto us this morning, church. He's worthy to be praised. You're worthy to praise. To receive those praise. He's worthy to receive those praise. I'm just going to say this. The altar's here. but I've shared the word he's worthy to be praised this morning no matter who you are where you're at no matter what you've been through no matter what you're going through he wants your praises he said I inhabit the praises of my people if you'll just pray unto me if you'll just obey my commandments if you'll just obey what I've said to do you'll have the glory you'll have the victory if you need victory this morning over something, this is the altar. If you need salvation this morning, there's the altar. If you need a miracle this morning, there's the altar. Cast your cares upon him, he said. And you can't let pride get in the way. He said, behold, I come quickly. He's knocking at the door. He's worthy to be praised this morning. He's done the work. And if he comes quickly and he leaves and you didn't make it, he gave you the chance. Just sing, church. He is don't do nothing else the rest of this service church just sit there and sing this song and pray receive from the Lord this morning this is an opportunity right here you are For from you are all things, and 
Sing it loud, church. I can hear the Just, we're going to close just 
keep you for a few more minutes. I give it the word that you can take with you and to build you. God is worthy. We are worthy. Go in peace. I love every one of you. But if you want to stay in praise, we can stay in praise. And I'm just going to leave it right there. Amen. Oh! 